Let's find the center of mass of a semicircular thin plate. There's a semicircular plate. It's going to have some radius of r. There's the x-axis. There's the y-axis. And I could find, say, a little bit of a mass dm here. And that would have an x value and a y value inside that. The integral of r dm. And this would be the r value for that. It's actually changed the area of or the radius of my plate to capital R. So little r is the position of any one of those little squares. And that's going to have an area dx and dy. But that's really the hard way of doing things, because if you think about this, symmetry tells me that the center of mass has to be somewhere along the y-axis. So in order to better do this integral, let's take a thin rod across here. And this is going to have some height of dy and it's going to have a position along the y-axis of y. And then it's going to have a width from there to there. And this is going to have some x value. But that x value is going to depend on where I'm at. In other words, clearly if I'm down here, my x value, the length of that little thin area, is going to be larger than it is here. Well, that comes from x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And so from left to right, this piece is going to have a length of 2x. So the area is going to equal 2x times the, the height of it, which is dy. But x equals r squared minus y squared under the radical. And so this area, and it's a tiny area, we're going to call it dA for area, is 2 radical r squared minus y squared dy. Now, this thin piece here also has some mass dm. It's a thin, thin piece, so it's got a really tiny mass dm. So the mass is dm. But it's a uniform, meaning the mass per unit area is the same everywhere. It's a uniform thin plate. And so the mass per unit area, we're going to use the Greek letter sigma for that, and that's a constant, so I'm going to put sigma naught. That's going to equal the mass per the unit area, dm over dA. Well, dm is just the mass of that plate, but or of that thin portion. dm is just the mass of that thin portion, but dA is 2 radical r squared minus y squared dy. And so the neat thing about this is that the integral of y dm, because I'm only carrying about the y position of the center of mass, is equal to the integral of y times sigma naught 2 radical r squared minus y squared dy. In other words, I take this line and I'm going to bring this denominator over to here. And so I'm going to get dm equals 2 sigma naught r squared minus y squared under the radical dy. So dm has now been written in terms of dy. We know how to integrate in terms of the y position. And I'm going to integrate from 0 to my top value of y, which is capital R. So now the position of the center of mass, and again the x position is 0, so I only care about the y position. So y center of mass equals the integral of y to sigma naught r squared minus y squared, all under the radical, dy, integrate from 0 to r, but then I divide by the total mass of a semicircular plate. But it's a uniform semicircular plate. So sigma naught equals the total mass divided by the total area, which is pi r squared over 2. Divide by 2 because it's a semicircle, not a full circle. So this becomes 2 sigma naught. Sigma naught is mass over pi r squared over 2. And then there's the denominator here, so that's right there. And then I have the integral of y r squared minus y squared, all under the radical, dy. Integrate from 0 to r. And so you can see these masses will go away. I'm going to bring the 2 up, and I'm going to get 4 over pi capital R squared. Integral from 0 to r y radical r squared minus y squared dy. But I can do this integral by substitution. So I'm going to let 
u equal r squared minus y squared. Then du dy equals minus 2y, or du equals minus 2y dy. And so this becomes 4 over pi r squared. And a great, I'm going to say I'm going to have minus 1 half radical r squared minus y squared, and then minus 2y dy. So the minus 2 here and the minus 1 half are just 1. And then this y right here I brought over here. And that's right there. And I do that to get my u substitution. So this becomes minus 4 over pi r squared times 2. And then I have the integral of the square root of u du. The integral of the square root of u du it becomes minus 2 over pi r squared. That's just going to be u to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves. And so that's going to be minus 4 over 3 pi r squared. u to the 3 halves, but u is just r squared minus y squared. So that's to the 3 halves power, and you evaluate from 0 to r. Now the minus sign might be bothering you, but it's going to go away here, so just watch. So when I substitute in my values, it's minus 4 over 3 pi r squared. When I put in r, I get 0, because I have r squared minus r squared. When I substitute r in for y, so that's 0. And then when I put in 0, I just get r squared to the 3 halves. That's minus r cubed. So you can see your minus signs go away. So I have 4 r cubed over 3 pi r squared which is 4r over 3 pi. So 3 pi is about 9, or almost 10, so that's about 4 tenths of the way up, so not quite halfway. And if you think about a semicircular plate, the majority of the mass, if I cut it in half, should be below, so the center of mass should be down here to the bottom section, and indeed that's what we have. So it's always good to have my answer make sense. Plus, it's got the proper units. It's all in units of radius. Now, if I have a hole in an object, the idea then is that I take the object. Well, maybe I've got a circular plate, because we're going to do this example with a hole in it. And what I want to do is I'm going to set this equal to the full circular plate without a hole in it. Then I'm going to subtract the center of mass of the hole. So think of the hole as being cut out of the original plate. I mean, that's pretty much what you're doing. I'd have, a, I'd have a circular plate, and I want a hole in it, so I'm going to drill it out or cut it out. Well, taking away is subtraction, which you learned back in elementary school. So that's what we're going to get here. So just as an example, here's a uniform square plate. Is everybody awake? Everyone? Chandler? Chandler, are you staying awake? Chandler, wake up. That's better. All right. So now that Chandler's awake with us again, let's take a look at this example. So I have a uniform plate, and I want to know where the center of mass is. Now, what I've done is I've cut away this section down here labeled D. And the idea here is, if that D wasn't gone, then the standard plate would have a center of mass right in its geometric center, because it's a uniform plate. So if it's a uniform plate, it's going to have a uniform mass per unit area. So imagine, if you will, just the square plate without the corner cut out, the center of mass of that is going to be 0, 0. And it's going to have some total mass, m, and some total area, a. Now the part that's cut out is this part down in here. And the center of mass of that, since it's uniform, it's going to be down here. So that's minus 1.5 meters in the y. And over here, so this is 3 meters. So 1, 2, and a half. So minus 2.5 meters in the x. So this cut section has a position of minus 2.5 meters and minus 1.5 meters. Now it's got a different mass in a different area, but it's got the same mass per unit area. So the position of the center of mass is the position of the top piece times its mass. So it's mass times 0, 0. And then the position of the hole is minus 2.5 meters, minus 1.5 meters. And its mass 
is some little m, and I'm going to subtract that out. And then I divide by the total mass, which is big M minus little m. Okay, the mass of the square plate minus the mass of the piece I've cut away. Now, since it's uniform, the mass per unit area is the same. So what I can do is I can say this right here, that's going to equal sigma times the area of that section. So that's going to be sigma. Okay, now keep in mind it's 6 meters from top to bottom. And this is square, so 6 meters times 6 meters is 36 square meters. So times 36 meters squared. And then 0, 0. Minus, well the whole is 1 meter by 3 meters, so that's 3 square meters times sigma. So sigma times 3 meters squared. And that was at negative 2.5 meters, negative 1.5 meters. And then I have sigma times 36 square meters minus sigma times 3 square meters. And so what you're seeing here is I can pull the sigma out of the top and the bottom, and I'm going to get negative 3 square meters times minus 2.5 meters, comma minus 1.5 meters. That's my numerator. My denominator is sigma, 36 square meters, minus 3 square meters. Okay, this term went away because of the 0, 0. And so the sigmas go away. So it doesn't matter if it's made of lead or cardboard. It's going to be the same center of gravity. So my denominator is 33 square meters. In my numerator, I have a minus 3 square meters. And then I have minus 2.5 meters, minus 1.5 meters. And you'll see the square meters go away, which is good because it's a position. So I should just have meters. And 3 over 33 is 11. And so I'm going to get 11 in the denominator. The minus sign is going to go in. And I'm going to end up with 2.5 meters in the i direction plus 1.5 meters in the j direction. Notice that's positive. But that also makes sense. This is the position of the center of mass. Because if we look at this plate, I've taken away a corner of the lower left. That shifts my center of mass to the upper right.